I'm here inside the Richard J. Cody Arena on Northfield Avenue, where the main activity is centered around ice skating and ice hockey. However, in an annual tradition for many years, each June, this facility takes on a different look as the place where West Orange High School students graduate, bringing to a close their years of public education in West Orange. I received my own high school diploma here back in 1975 when it was known as the South Mountain Arena and I graduated from West Orange Mountain High School. At that time, the town had two high schools and students from the old West Orange High School on Northfield Avenue also received their diplomas here. Perhaps high school graduation is seen today just as an ordinary occurrence and an annual rite of passage. But in another time and era, attending school or receiving a high school diploma was something no one took for granted. So it's here, at this place where public education symbolically ends for West Orange students, that our story begins. The roots of public education as we know it today in West Orange date back to even before West Orange was a town and can be found in a book detailing the early history of the oranges. This book written by Stephen Wicks in 1892 entitled History of the Oranges in Essex County from 1666 to 1806 tells the story of an early school and likely the first school ever within the present day boundaries of West Orange. Wicks mentions that according to the records of Samuel Harrison, one of the first settlers, the school was built in 1729. It was a framed building, about 20 by 30 feet, with eight feet posts, roofed with shingles and sided with boards within. The chimney in the corner, built upon the timbers above, received the pipe from a cast iron box stove. The house occupied the triangle of ground formed by the intersection of the Swinefield Road with the Valley Road at the turn of the road toward the notch. The door was in the southern gable and the building stood facing northeast to southwest, which were the recollections of the old people. The other three sides were provided with windows affording a free opportunity to the students to relieve the wear and tear of mental effort by watching all that was passing on the highways from all directions. Since Valley Road is now Main Street, and the Swinefield Road is the former name of Eagle Rock Avenue, Wicks's book is describing to us this precise location. In present day terms, the old schoolhouse therefore would have been located somewhere near this intersection in front of Our Lady of Lord's Church. The knots mentioned by Wicks would be referenced to where Eagle Rock Avenue begins here at Main Street to begin its pass over the top of the mountain. Any remnants of the school certainly have been displaced by modern development and are long gone but I think I may have stumbled across something that provides us with further details. Several years ago, I found this old handwritten document mixed among other papers given to me when the old First Presbyterian Church of Orange closed in 2010. The church was founded around 1719 and had nearly 300 years of history in the Oranges when it closed. This document was written by Pastor White of the First Church and dates to about 1850. White mentions what I believe is the name of that first school described in the Wicks book. Pastor White makes reference by saying, the Franklin Schoolhouse in the garden of the late Mary Williams. Mary Williams garden clearly would have been near the same location described by Wicks in his 1892 book. But this document now gives us the name not mentioned by Wicks of the Franklin Schoolhouse that may have been otherwise lost to history as one of the first schools in all the oranges. Wick's book description also goes on to state two more important details. This structure occupied its original site until about the 1850s when it was moved a few feet to the southwest and within line of the Valley Road. The timber of the old schoolhouse is still in use, being an essential part of a barn in the same vicinity. The present-day brick building, which houses all these retail businesses along Main Street near Eagle Rock Avenue, was built in the 1920s. But before that, the house of John Williams once stood at this location. I found a 1904 picture that shows John Williams' house, but it also shows the faint and curious image of a barn on his property. Wicks mentioned that the old schoolhouse was still in use 
as an essential part of a barn in 1892, which was the same year John Williams' house was built. The barn seen in this 1904 photo of John Williams' house bears resemblance to a small schoolhouse and is very similar to the dimensions described by Wicks. It also has a door in what could have been the southern gable, also described by Wicks. This 1904 photo could be showing us a glimpse of what remained of the schoolhouse built in 1729 and once located within the present-day boundaries of West Orange. I can only speculate that this photo could be providing us with a forgotten hidden link to the past, showing us the school where public education first began in the Oranges. Here it stood and was used as a public schoolhouse until the new stone building was erected on the same street and south of the Llewellyn Park Gate. The final detail contained in the Wicks 1892 description of the first schoolhouse in the Oranges actually brings us to the beginning of the story of public education in present-day West Orange. Wicks mentions a new stone building erected on the same street, which of course would be Main Street, and even gives us a more precise location as being just south of the Llewellyn Park entrance. This unmistakably is referring to the St. Mark's School. The St. Mark's School once stood just south of the Llewellyn Park entrance where the large office building of 80 Main Street now sits. In 1860, the vestry of St. Mark's Church purchased a plot of land represented by the area seen here shaded in red for a cost of $2,000. A short time later, a stone building known as the St. Mark's School was constructed here for a cost of $12,000 and opened about 1862. The school had nine rooms and was used for all grades. Local history books have previously reported that this school opened in 1865. However, I have found the handwritten minutes of the first meeting of the newly formed Town Committee of the Township of West Orange from April 18, 1863. They mention that their first meeting occurred at the West Orange Schoolhouse, but the minutes from a meeting about a week later specifically refers to the meeting place as being the St. Mark's School. So with the discovery of these documents, we now know that the school was opened before 1865. It was around that time, however, in 1865 that a two-story brick addition behind the school was constructed for a cost of $20,000. It was a large auditorium known as Llewellyn Hall and seated nearly 500 people and was one of the first places used in West Orange for public gatherings. The St. Mark's School replaced the first school of the Oranges mentioned in the Wicks 1892 book. But by the time St. Mark's was in use in 1863, it's likely several other schools were already in use throughout the Oranges. But with the founding of West Orange as a separate town in 1863, the St. Mark's School became the first school in West Orange. However, no high school grades were offered at St. Mark's and any West Orange students who wanted to advance past grammar school had to do so at neighboring Orange High School. This presented financial hardship for most families since the tuition had to be paid in order to attend. In 1890, however, high school classes were first introduced at St. Mark's with the other grades. But as the population of West Orange grew, the school became overcrowded and at the time there were no other schools in West Orange and no public school system. That all changed in 1892 when the state of New Jersey established new laws requiring all townships to establish local boards of education. Prior to that, the St. Mark's School was managed by a board of trustees, but in 1892, it came under the jurisdiction of the newly formed West Orange Board of Education and George R. Stagg, who served as its first president. With the founding of the Board of Education, it marked the beginning of public education in West Orange and gave the St. Mark's School the distinction of being the official first and only public school in West Orange. George Stagg was also instrumental in helping form West Orange's first high school program. Largely due to his initiative, West Orange proudly graduated the first high school class in 1893 from the St. Mark's School. The class consisted of nine students and was West Orange's first ever high school graduating class. The name Stagg may have a familiar ring because he was the older brother of the legendary football coach Amos Alonzo Stagg also from West Orange. But George Stagg was legendary in his own right 
as the first president of the West Orange Board of Education because he laid the groundwork for the building of the new school in West Orange, which opened on Gaston Street in 1898 and essentially gave West Orange its first building for a high school. The new Gaston Street School accommodated grades 5 through 12 and became the second school in town. St. Mark's School was still used until 1912 when a third school known as the Fairmont School opened adjacent to the Gaston Street School. These two new schools completely phased out the age in St. Mark's School as it soon was to take on a different role. With the Gaston Street School and the Fairmont School in operation, St. Mark's was basically left abandoned and vacant. In 1914, however, Richard Colgate, a Lone Park resident, donated funds to make St. Mark's a vocational school for young men. The following year it was taken over by Essex County and continued operation as a vocational school, tuition free until 1926 when it was destroyed by fire. This marker now has been placed in front of the location where the old stone building of the St. Mark's School sat from 1862 to 1926 as it finally recalls and remembers the first public school in town and the place where it can be said public education was born in West Orange. <laughs>